Okay, we are Team 8. Uh, the name of our project is Metagenius for reasons that will become obvious by the end of this presentation. <laughs> uh, so, we were tasked with um, doing metagenomic assembly with the help of uh, tax genomics like breeds. Um, so, metagenomic assembly is really hard. Why? Because assembly is hard. Um, even back in the days of Sanger sequencing, when the qualities were high and the reads were long, assembly was hard at that point. Now, with Illumina and other short read technologies, you can have a billion reads, but assembly, uh, error rates are higher, so assembly is still hard. Um, that's not going to change anything soon. Um, with <coughs> other you have complex samples. You don't know the individual constituents of your sample, so um, figuring out where the reads go, which reads go together can be difficult. Um, and one of the reasons is because of sequence homology between um, individual genomes. So, with the help of the 10x genomics uh, chromium system, um, it makes it a little bit easier. Um, the way this works is uh, you get a high molecular weight DNA, um, you shove that into one of these gel beads that they call gems. Um, there's around eight um, high molecular weight molecules per gem. Uh, you make it a Luna library within each gem. Uh, so, every, like, at each, each one of these 10 molecules has a different, um, has the same barcode, and, and each of the, the different uh, molecules from different gems have different barcodes. So, you have then you align these barcodes, uh, you align these reads to, um, or sorry, sorry, you create these length reads where each long read, each short read now occupies. <laughs> um, oh. This guy works at 10x, I don't know why he's not doing it. <laughs> <laughs> so each short read, what you're seeing here, this, this, each dot is an original short read and it's made. Yes. And they're colored by their barcode, and so what you can see is that you can actually trace every short read back to the starting molecule. And so even though you're doing short read sequencing and you're getting the advantages, the high throughput, the, the low cost, the low per base pair error rate, you're able to derive you know, 110 to 100 kb uh, length scale information from these length reads. Okay, awesome. We got that. All right. <laughs> the sample. So what do we have? So this is a bit contrived, but it's contrived on purpose so we can actually analyze whether we were successful or not. So we have five different um, bacterial strains um, that were grown up and the DNA mixed together in equal proportions and then sequenced. Um, the, the libraries were made on the Titanic system and then sequenced on Illumina. So it's relatively cheap, 450 bucks per sample. Um, the, the sequencing was done on a, a high seq uh, 4000. Um, around 100 million reads were, were, were received and 400x covered to the five genomes. So the pipeline, fun part, this is what we did in three days. So we started with 2 by 100x Illumina reads, um, did a through graph assembly. That, that, that was actually the input um, to our to the problem, the input data to the problem. Um, we walked over this debris graph and created super contigs. Um, and also in parallel, um, we used the link read uh, barcodes um, to look for enriched contigs that were enriched for a particular barcode. So that was effectively um, enabling us to say these two contigs share the same barcode, so therefore um, they are derived from the same um, individual genome. So then, using those pieces of information, the supercontigs and the enriched or deleted uh, barcodes, um, we uh, selected distant supercontigs using using this, this Jaccard index, and then recruit and took the largest contig within these distant regions and recruited reads from the original sequencing data that had the same barcode that made up this this one supercontig and assembled and extended that that one supercontig. Um, with another assembly, a local reassembly with all that. Um, and this led to a lot of overlapping contigs because they were all local, so then they assembled into each other. Um, and we then filtered using, uh, we generated non overlapping Uber contigs, we're calling them now, um, with, with, with uh, gamer hashing. And then we took these Uber contigs, scaffolded them using the, paired end, the original paired end sequencing information, and then we did a second scaffolding using the link reads because the link reads gives you that much more. Um, so that was the pipeline, kind of threw the kitchen sink at it, just to see what came out. Um, and we only had like three and a third people, so it worked out pretty well. Um, here's some details on the clustering, which I don't have time to get into, but it's, it's uh, relatively straightforward. Um, and at the end of the day, here's what we got. So on the top, the top um, this is IGV, the reads, actual original sequencing reads in IGV. Um, not linked reads, they're just the short reads. Um, the first Novo assembly is happening in the, the, the bottom plot right here. So you can see the N50 is about 1 kb. Um, this, these are the super contigs from traversing the ring <coughs> graph. And then this is the, the, on the bottom here is the first instance where we actually use the link read information 
to make these um, Uber contigs. And so at this point, and then we actually scaffolded those. So, so after the first scaffolding, we got around um, 120 um, kilobase and 50. So we went from 1, 1, 1K to around 120. Um, and we got the second scaffolding done about five to 10 minutes before this. So we don't have an infinity on that yet, but it's, it's happening. So in conclusion, in three days you can do a lot of science. So.